Hi folks, here are some heat homework problems and uh, the first group that we're going to be dealing with are some temperature conversions. They're pretty easy. The equations you're going to find on your conversion factor sheet. Uh, very often if you see me in a face-to-face -face class this this is going to be a orange piece of paste paper. Um, if you are online, I, it's probably not going to be orange, but uh, that SI units and conversion factor sheet is where you're going to find these equations. So here goes. Um, Howard feels sick and his mom takes his temperature. It's 312 kelvins. Howard's mom is a nerd. She's taking his temperature in kelvins. What is this on the Fahrenheit scale? So the kelvin temperature is equal to the degrees Celsius plus 273. And the degrees Fahrenheit is going to be equal to nine-fifths the degrees Celsius plus 32. This is going to be a two-stepper. We're going to have to first convert to Celsius, and once we have Celsius, then we're going to have to convert back to Fahrenheit. So degrees Celsius is going to be equivalent to degree Kelvin minus 273. So 312 Kelvins minus 273 is going to give me uh, 39 degrees Celsius. And now we have to take this, push it up into here, and degree Fahrenheit will then be 9 fifths times 39 degrees plus 32. Now orders of operations is going to be your challenge. Um, multiply first, then add the 32. So 39 times 9 divided by 5 plus 32. And uh, poor little sick Howard has got a temperature of, I calculate it as 102.2 if we leave it to three sig figs, 102 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, it's a bit of a fever. I'm sure he does not feel perfectly spiffy. All right, next problem. Because the surface of the moon has no air that helps hold the heat from the sun, its temperature varies greatly from day to night. It can range from 375 Kelvin during the day to 100 Kelvin at night. What are these temperatures on the Celsius and the Fahrenheit scale? So let's go ahead and do these. Um, let's do the Celsius first. Now degrees Celsius is going to be equivalent to the Kelvin temperature minus 273. So we're going to start with 375 minus 273. And when I do that subtraction, 375 minus 273. Yeah, I know I could do it in my head. I'm just not feeling like it today. 102 degrees Celsius. Um, and then the other one is going to be to 100 minus 273 is going to be, I know, again, I can do that in my head, uh, it's going to be minus 173 degrees Celsius. So those are going to be my Celsius temperatures. Now, converting those into Fahrenheit, uh, that equation, degrees Fahrenheit, is going to be equivalent to 9 fifths the Celsius temperature plus 32. Again, order of operations is going to be the thing you're going to have to worry about. So the first one is going to be 9 fifths times 102 plus 32. So let's put that in the calculator. 102 times 9 divided by 5 plus 32. Would you believe rounded off to sig figs 216 degrees Fahrenheit? And then the next one is going to be 9 fifths times minus 173 plus 32. So carry that negative sign. 173 negative times 9 divided by 5 plus 32. Uh, would you believe negative 279 degrees Fahrenheit? So quite hot and quite cold on the moon because it has no atmosphere to help hold that heat in. 
Number three, normal body temperature is often quoted as 98.6 Fahrenheit. This number was established in the 1800s and is actually an average determined by the German physician Darl, Dr. Karl Wunderlich. The modern current average body temperature is more accurately measured as 98.2. What is the difference in these two measurements on the Celsius scale? Now the best way to do this is we're going to take both temperatures, we're going to convert them to Celsius, and then we are going to subtract. So the first temperature is the 98.6, and degrees Celsius is going to be equivalent to 5 ninths times the degree Fahrenheit minus 32. So the first one is going to be 5 ninths 98.6 minus 32. So the first one will be, see, 98.6 minus 32. Got to do that subtraction first, then you do your multiplicate. Multiply. Yeah, you're going to then multiply. Div times 5, divide by 9, I get 37. Celsius for that one. And then the second is going to be 5 ninths, 98.2 minus 32 degrees Celsius. So 98.2 minus 32 times 5 divide by 9, 36.8. If we round that off to sig figs, the difference between those two, if I now subtract one from the other, is going to be 0 0.2 degrees Celsius. So that's going to be the difference between those two measurements on the Celsius scale. All right, let's go ahead and do the next problem. We're now getting into some thermal expansion problems. Um, and this one says, one steel section of the Alaskan pipeline has a length of 65.0 meters and a temperature of 18 degrees Celsius when it was installed. What is the change in length, change in length, when the temperature drops to, temp the new temperature drops to negative 45 degrees Celsius? Well, our linear expansion equation says this, the change in length of an object is going to be its original length times its coefficient of linear expansion times that change in temperature. So the change in length here, is going to be equal to the original length, 65 meters. Now, where do we find the coefficient of linear expansion? On that constant sheet that I gave you, there are coefficients of linear expansion. Um, this is a steel section of the Alaskan pipeline. Steel is sort of like uh, chocolate chip cookies. Um, there are different recipes, and your granny's chocolate chip cookies don't not taste like your aunt Frida's chocolate chip cookies, because everybody has a slightly different recipe. Steel's the same way. So when you start looking at things like coefficients of linear expansion for steel, um, they're going to vary as well. Now on our sheet, the coefficient that I have given you is 12 times 10 to the negative 6 per degree Celsius. So if you find another number somewhere else, that's why. The change in temperature is going to be 18 degrees Celsius, it's a change in minus a minus 45. We want to know the, the absolute difference between those two temperatures. And so it's going to be a big range from 18 above to 45 below. It's going to be that whole temperature change that we care about. So now we can put this in our calculator. First off, let's do this temperature change. Make sure we've got that straight in our heads. 18 minus a negative 45. So this difference over here is going to be a 63 degrees Celsius difference times 12 to the negative sixth times 65. And when I did this, I ended up with an answer of 0 0.049. And the units on this, the degrees Celsius, are going to cancel. And this is going to be meters. That is the change in length in that section of the Alaskan pipeline. And you might go, well, that's not too bad. But that is um, about right around 5 centimeters, and that's right around 2 inches. Um, and that's enough to make fittings come loose and put a lot of stress on nuts and bolts. So definitely something people have to keep in mind. 
Um, I'm going to double check our time. Do we have time to do one more? You betcha we got time to do another one. So let's do number five. Here goes. The Eiffel Tower, Tower is a steel structure whose height, so that's going to be its height, is 19 point four centimeters it can't be nineteen point four centimeters um what what whose height increases there we go so that's the change in height i thought boy that is a mini eiffel tower i was certainly reading that wrong nineteen point four centimeters when the temperature changes the temperature changes from negative nine degrees celsius to 41 degrees Celsius, so from a very hot to a very cold day. I want to know what is the original length of the Eiffel Tower. It is steel, so the coefficient of linear expansion for steel, um, it's on that constant sheet, is 12 times 10 to the negative 6 per degree Celsius. There's no units up top, just units down below. The equation we're going to use is change in length is equivalent to original length times alpha times change in temp. And this time we are going to solve for the original length. So the original length is going to be equivalent to the change in length divided by alpha and the change in temp. So the change in length is going to be 0 0.194 meters. We had to convert from centimeters to meters. Alpha is 12 times 10 to the negative sixth per degree Celsius, and change in temperature is from 41 degrees Celsius minus a negative 9 degrees Celsius. So we're going to actually have a 50 degree. The, all of this is going to represent a 50 degree Celsius change in temp. And when we do the math on that, the original length comes out to be 0.194 divided by 12 times 10 to the negative sixth divided by 50 and I end up with 323 meters as the original length of the Eiffel Tower. How about original height? Does that sound better? All right, now we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.